So obviously 3D printing will replace injection molding, but not for the engineering reasons that most people point to. Actually, there's economic reasons that 3D printing will eventually replace molding for effectively every single product made. So the traditional way of manufacturing a product is to go through a very long design and development process where you figure out if a product is something that people want and then you pursue having it made. You generally call some company overseas in order to produce the mold for that part, effectively setting your product into stone, and then you have them produce tens to hundreds of thousands of that product in order to amortize the cost of the mold. So effectively, if the mold costs $5,000 and you have 5,000 parts, well, there is a dollar of mold cost in each one of those parts on top of the cost of the plastic and the actual molding itself. So this makes it very expensive and very high risk to create a new product, which effectively makes it something that only large organizations or wealthy individuals are able to actually pursue because molding is such a high barrier to entry. Conversely, you have 3D printing. Now, 3D printing is very flexible, very quick, very affordable because you're able to get a printer and start messing with your design right away. Here is the fundamental reason that we think 3D printing will replace injection molding. 3D printing effectively digitizes design of physical products. Rather than having to carve your design in stone and beat out tens of thousands of them, you're able to quickly iterate on a model and try new things out and test products. Rather than having 10,000 of one product that you're swinging for the fences and hope you sell well, you're able to make 10,000 individual products. You're then able to find the ones that sell well, and then you're able to focus on those and expand them out. It's very similar to like web design. When Google was getting started up, they used to try 10 or 15 different variations of the blue for their buttons to find out which color people would click on the most. You're now able to do that with physical products, and that is only possible and affordable with 3D printing. So at the startup, you have a much higher opportunity for success because you're able to have more at-bats than you traditionally would with injection molding. Rather than having a $100,000 cost and hopefully it's successful, you're able to take that $100,000 and deploy it towards testing and verification and trying new variations and focusing in on what your customers actually want. And then tweaking the design over time because since it's not set in stone, you're able to change the design and improve it over time. You're able to plug into print farms like slant 3d so that you can just update the design but then still have the scale to mass produce it when it becomes successful it's like having a server rather than trying to host a website on your laptop if facebook had been hosted on a laptop it would have crashed for forever and never been successful but since they were able to build on systems like aws and other external server systems they were able to scale up very quickly now, the argument that many people have is the fact that 3D printing can't hit scale. This is untrue. 3D printing is able to produce as many, if not more parts than injection molding at the same rate over a time period. But it's also not really relevant. First of all, most products never produce more than 25,000 units in their lifetime. Even if you see a product in Walmart, many of those products don't sell tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of units. People have this idea that anything that's molded sells millions of pieces. They don't. They sell thousands if they're lucky. Many sell less. So scale isn't a requirement that actually exists in the real world. It's a construct created from a misunderstanding of how most products are created. Most products fail, which again gives you the opportunity with printing to fail fast and often. It allows you to use software methodologies for developing physical products that were never possible before. If you have the capability to rapidly change your product, you will get customer feedback faster than 25,000 units, and then you will want to update. The same way a website evolves as you find out that people are sticking and not purchasing and not buying, you would be able to observe customer behavior and say, oh, everybody's going for the pink rather than the blue. Let's start ratcheting up the pink more so that we can sell more of those items than the ones that people don't want. Or you're like, oh, we're making mini figurines. Well, people don't really like that character. Let's move with this character more, focus in on that and expand it out. Rather than having 100,000 pieces that are all stored up, you are able to reduce the size down to like 1,000 pieces. Find out what sells well, and then on the next run, 
upgrade, iterate, and improve, and then move on to the next run. And then your total volume sizes, your batch sizes, reduce. Your total volume will be the same. You would still be selling 25 or 100,000 pieces in a year, but each batch would be smaller than you are required to do with injection molding. With molding, you have that tooling cost, a high upfront cost that prevents you from being able to change and move over time. With 3D printing, you're able to get the scale, but you're able to change and evolve and iterate on your product very quickly. And since there is that capability, you're able to move away from the high volumes down to lower and lower volumes, ideally down to where you're adjusting every single unit based on what the customer is looking for. That is the ideal future of 3D printing that we're working towards, and it's something that will push the entire industry forward. So if I was to sum this up, really the main thing is just the fact that since 3D printing allows you to change a product over time without any upfront cost, volumes will reduce because the rate of iteration and change will increase. People will still be producing lots of parts, but they'll be able to do them in smaller and smaller batch sizes to where the validity of a mold is ridiculous. If you're producing a thousand parts of a single design, the cost of the mold would make those thousand parts too expensive. But since you're printing them, you're able to do a thousand here, a thousand here, a thousand there. And since printing can produce at the same scale, there's no reason to use the molds. They're a high upfront cost and they lock you into a product that might not be a winner. 3D printing gives you the opportunity to try, scale, iterate, and evolve far more quickly so that you can create a product that customers really love and appreciate and make you competitive in the market. Have a great day, everybody.